Fast websites are great. When you build a fast website, you will feel so good about browsing it, about using it. Your users will love it. They will buy more products. They will do more shopping. They will spend more time on your website. And it's overall a net win for everyone. But how do you even build fast websites? I see a lot of people on internet have a lot of dumb websites. There are so many mistakes that are made, so many optimizations that can be done. And I hope if you are building your next website, you will consider this video as a starting point on what tech stack to choose and how to deploy your website because these are two very important things. All right, so in this video, whatever I'm gonna tell you, it's not hypothetical. I'm not reading it out of a book. This is the exact same system that we have implemented on Fermion in terms of front end and back end and all the speed as well. So if you look at Fermion in general about any of the page or anything that is happening on Fermion, you will see that speed reflects what we say, right? And not only in just front end, which is like easy. So I will not just tell you that, you know, let's just deploy this project on Word and call it a day. No, no, not that. But in fact, the full application itself, because if I go into the app side of Fermion, which is acme.fermion.app, and if you start to look inside courses, for example, if you're opening these bunch of courses, you're opening a bunch of tabs, you're going into videos, enabling, disabling DRM. So all of this is covered in what I will teach you today. So Fermion is a website that we run for white labeled businesses that can use this as an LMS, as a product internally for creating courses, contests, coding labs, all of that. But the fundamental technology that we have used over here remains the same. So what you have to do is split your stack first of all into two things, the front end and the back end. Right? I believe these should be two separate technologies completely. What I mean by that is that do not mix your front end with your back end if you want speed gains. Again, just to clarify, what I'm trying to tell you is do not make database calls from APIs in Next.js, just to be precise, right? So I'm taking an example of Next.js because it's fast enough in production. So you can start with Next.js, for example. This is one of the frameworks I know with React, which are easy to use and easy to start, but you can use Use any of them, React.js also, Vue, Nuxt, all of these are like good options and all of them have now swelled all of this. They have optimized enough that they appear extremely fast on front end, right? But what is important is that you do not make this mistake of making calls on front end with database calls with the APIs in front end, because I'll tell you why. For front end, what you specifically want is your static files to be deployed on edge. That's the first thing that you want. So let's say if I'm opening this page, for example, if I refresh this page, or if I just open back dashboard, and if I refresh this dashboard, the dashboard's skeleton, that is this view page source, if I do that, this thing should come directly from an edge server. That means it should come from the nearest server near me, right? So static files has to be deployed on the edge. That's one thing for front end. For back end, what I would say is your API source code should be inside a VPC idly with the database. The reason I say this is because of two things. The first First thing is that it avoids exposing DB over internet. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that insanely fast speeds of connection, right? Insanely fast speed of connections. Just to talk a little bit more about numbers here. If I go inside my network tab, disable cache and refresh this page, you will see the time to first byte over here, not even time to first byte, the whole response over here is served in 45 milliseconds, right? You can see it takes the server 40 milliseconds to respond and one millisecond to download the content and the server which is available here in this specific case it's coming from cloudflare right so cloudflare uses anycast system and uh, in case of anycast this will come to the closest server come from the closest server possible so that's one thing which is very important second thing about the back end which i mentioned your api source code should be inside vpc ideally with the database so just to give you an example of this why i think this is important is i will show you this thread which i came across the other day where dax mentioned the screenshot i don't know where the screenshot is from I don't know the source but look at this Prisma Postgres Planet Scale and Neon all of these are like database service providers and this test from here what I was able to figure out is that this test is being performed by a Cloudflare worker querying a database from a different location where your database is situated right so again look at these numbers and look at the fact that even numbers like 468 milliseconds are in green right 468 milliseconds if your system is taking this much time to query a database it has to complete the response maybe do some processing after that has happened and so on it would be an extremely slow system i want to give you another example of 
Formion, right? So Formion is the platform we are using and on our backend, we expose some of this performance data which is available over here. What you're seeing over here is this function, which I'm showing you right now, whenever I'm refreshing the page, it invokes a database call. So it checks the database, it checks the internet also using a DNS query. It does a rate limit check. That's basically it because there is no data being sent. So there is no parsing of this. On our internal systems, we consistently get a single digit millisecond query time to our database right if not a lot of times one or two milliseconds and mind you like these rate limit functions for example with any rate limiter or this invoking functions involves multiple calls right so this screenshot was funny to me because if you look at 468 millisecond which is also in green this system is almost 150 times faster just because of a simple fact that we are paying attention to what needs to be done over here that your vpc your database should be very close to your backend system in order to make it fast. And that is what happens when I refresh this page, these widgets that you see, which load for a split second, they are loading from a backend from a real database, right? So that's essentially what you want to do for your backend. For your frontend, it has to be deployed on edge. For edge, I would recommend either you go with a provider like Vercel or Cloudflare. These are like good providers. You can go for other edge providers also like Netlify and so on, but I don't have a lot of experience with them. But Vercel and Cloudflare are like really good. They have a really good edge network. The problem with Vercel, however, nowadays, is that I don't agree with a lot of practices which Next.js forces you to do. For example, making database calls from the front-end code is one of them. Basically, making your front-end code as back-end also, right? That's something which I think should not be done for both performance reasons and for security reasons. Call me a little paranoid, but I just don't feel comfortable writing database queries. In the same files, I'm writing my component where the function is also like, you know, it's everything looks like it's exposed, but the bundle is supposed to create these boundaries between client and server because JavaScript as a language is not built for that, right? You might say that, okay, why are you then comfortable with PHP? Because PHP also follows the same pattern. PHP is a different templating, different language altogether. The patterns are different. JavaScript was never built for such use cases. We built bundlers on top of them to create these boundaries. But again, like that's, that's another topic. That's another thing in general. Once you have done this for backend, a few more things which you can do is maybe use virtual machines instead of server serverless what it will do is that it will avoid of course like insane serverless builds if you are at some point ddos or whatever secondly it would also keep your instances warm right so in case if you are using a language like node.js javascript you know that there's a time for cold start right and if you get a lot of load suddenly what's going to happen is that serverless architecture is going to start more instances which is going to take some time and until and unless that happens your api would be very slow because it's boot up right so using virtual machines instead of serverless if applicable would even increase the speed further right but i think even more than backend where the maximum performance improvement would be if you deploy your front end on edge always on edge and always create static files try to avoid server side rendering try to avoid you know any work that your server is doing specifically with when you're using technologies like javascript because they are extremely slow as a templating engine when you run them on the server right? It takes a lot of time for converting a React.js snippet, a React.js code into a fully functional HTML document on the fly. You can do it once or twice, but then store the cache result and then instantly serve it. Now I know again, this goes completely against RSC and React server components and how the whole Vercel and Next.js thing is structured to be, but that's just me. I would still die on this hill that SSG architecture with Vercel is the best architecture that has to exist. SSG plus backend. Nothing else makes sense to me. If you need SSR, you can do it, sure, for some of the pages. But still, SSG plus a backend call, which is connected with your database inside a VPC, is still the way to build fastest websites, right? And everything else, everything that needs to communicate with your backend then communicates with the backend over internet, right? If it's not critical, it should communicate over internet directly. If it is critical to speed, then you can probably think of, you know, building that service inside VPC itself, right? That's all also one option. But for the most part, I would ask you to keep services outside of your VPC and use backend as an API once you have exposed your database because it's just simpler to move 
things across the world, right? For example, if you're using a workload where you are processing something, some videos or something, instead of doing that in your VPC where you might run into multiple things like, you know, capacity issues or, you know, maybe you want to change how the thing works and you want to deploy it in another region or maybe in another cloud. That is where you will really start to feel that, oh my God, I should have done this over internet instead of like VPC, right? So again, choices you have to make. This is the architecture which I will tell, not a very fancy thing, not a very, I'm not saying that you use Next.js or don't use this or that. It doesn't matter what technology you're using today. These are equally fast. What needs to be done is your infrastructure properly. And that is the infrastructure that you should use. And that is the same infrastructure that we use over at Fermion as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video very soon.